We need each other and the church for support. We need each other for understanding. We need each other in times of, of both sadness and in times of joy. If you don't believe me, just stop and think of how, how much more you enjoy sharing good times and good things with your spouse or your children. It should be the same with your church family. It makes it all the more wonderful <coughs> to share joy. That's why we need the church. That's why we need to come to church. That's why occasional churchgoers miss out on so much. You know, it's easier for somebody that doesn't go to church to come to church than it is for somebody that used to go to church and slowly dwindle away to come back. And I'm going to ask you something, and I'd like you to try to remember it. When we have somebody that comes back after a long time, Please don't ask them where they've been. That's the last thing. That's one of the reasons some of them don't come back. They're afraid somebody's going to do it. Well, where have you been? None of your business. That's between me and God. They should just be happy they're here. Look at, look at what Christ tells this man to do. He says, go home and share with others what God's done for you. Well, folks, let me tell you something. If you try to go out and share the things that God does for you with people that don't know God, they're going to look at you and think, what's wrong with this person? Or they're going to say, oh, well, that's nice and walk off. Whereas your church family will truly celebrate you. Celebrate the good times and be there and support with you in the bad times. And we're, we're warned more than one place that oftentimes we miss out on blessings because we don't share one another's burdens. That's not a request. That's a mandatory thing for Christians, folks. And one of the things all too often we don't do is when we do have bad times, we don't tell others about it. Well, I don't want people feeling sorry for me. It's not a question of feeling sorry for you, folks. It's a question of being there and sharing things with you. How does it make you feel when you can help someone or be there and support somebody? Makes you feel good, doesn't it? Makes you feel better. Makes you get this special warm feeling when it's another... Well, guess what you're doing when you don't share? You're robbing others of that opportunity. That's right. You're robbing your fellow Christians of an opportunity to show that they are Christians. Of an opportunity to share. Can you be a Christian without coming to church? Yes. But I bet you won't. And that's your experience too. I grew up going to church every Sunday. For 12 years, I did not miss a single Sunday at all. Then for the next 12, I barely made a Sunday. I have things to change. But they change because I change places, I change atmospheres, and in doing so, I lost something. I lost that church then. I lost a tie with somebody. And in a time when I needed the church the most, it wasn't there in the way I thought it ought to be. How dare they lock the doors of the church? Well, maybe because they don't want somebody to steal everything. Unfortunately, today's world is not the world it used to be. But it can still be there as long as we know that our church family is as close as a telephone. Folks, people can't help you 
if you don't let it. The maddest I've ever seen somebody was the fact that they got mad at the preacher and they said, well, you weren't there when I needed you. And he simply said, how am I supposed to know you needed me when you didn't call? I promise you folks, ministers are not soothsayers, prophets, or clairvoyants. We have to know through y'all what's going on. And it works the same for every other member of your church family, folks. Look around you. These people love you. We're supposed to love each other. What did Paul say? Either Greek or Jew, either slave nor free, neither male nor female, we are all one in Jesus Christ. And if you're not part of that oneness, you ought to be. You should want to be. Because you really need to be. You do not know what blessings you're missing when you do not share both good and bad. Oftentimes, I watch people and I've heard people say, well, I, I'd like to do that, but I, I just don't feel led to. And you get to talking to so many of us and what we're looking for is a burning bush experience before we do something. God didn't have one of those and it's already happened. So if you're waiting on it, it ain't going to come. But listen to what he did with his greatest prophet. Wind came so that it broke the rocks of the mountain. Earthquake came so that it shook the mountain. And in neither of those was God. Next, great fire came and burned the mountain. But guess what? God wasn't in it either. The next time you hear somebody talk about hurricanes and earthquakes and fires being uh, the work of God, just laugh. How did God come? How will God come? In a still, small voice. And you have to be listening for it to hear it, folks. And in this world today of constant noise, that isn't always easy. More than once I've talked with somebody and they say, I pray and I pray and I pray and God never answers me. Nine out of ten of them when you ask them those, well, do you sit and listen for God's answer after you've prayed or told him what you want? You just sit and ask him to listen for his answer. Most of them say, well, no. Should I? <coughs> Shouldn't you? <coughs> if you ask somebody for something, don't you normally wait to hear their reply? You know, only kids do They take what they want and assume they're going to get it. But most of us, when we ask somebody for something, it's just common sense to sit there and wait to hear their reply if you really want to hear it. And yet, the most important questions that we ask, the things that affect our lives the most, most of us don't take time to sit and listen to what God's response is. 